Hey guys, welcome to another BIM Every Day tutorial. So today I want to just talk to you guys how to create a detail view title. So on the screen here I have two objects. Really they both look the same, but the one on the right is just a bunch of lines, some text, and another piece of text. And the one on the left is the the drawing title that we're going to create. And so you might be asking, well, who cares? Why can't I just use lines and text? Well, this is Revit, so it should be a little more advanced than just a bunch of lines and text. Plus, the beauty of it is when I want to create another one, I can just click on Create Similar and slap it anywhere. If I, want to, if I move it or my sheet is moving around, I just can click this. I don't have to worry about selecting all the text, the line, and the circle. So uh, let's get started here. The first thing you want to do is go over to New, um, Annotation Symbol, then just click on Generic Annotation and Open. So you're presented with the Generic Annotation Template. Um, you can select this text and delete it. So the first thing to note is that when you are working in a Generic Annotation family is the sizes that you create are not actual sizes but rather rather the final size on the sheet so what that means is that when I create a line and I draw a circle let's say this is one inch but this is the one inch at whatever scale I'm doing so the circle will change in size depending on what scale it is but at the end of the day when you print your sheet this circle will always be one inch so first thing I want to do is I know I want this circle to be a half inch big and on my final drawing so I'm gonna just change this to a quarter of an inch then I'm just gonna move it to the center point here then I want to make sure that this circle will always be in or aligned to this horizontal line here. So I'll select it, go over here to the properties, and turn on this center mark visible. And what this does, is it puts a little point here that I can lock to and dimension. So first I want to go up to a line, select the horizontal line, and then the center mark, and lock it. Then I want to go over to my dimension, and click on Align Dimension, select the vertical reference plane, and then the center mark again and then click lock then select the dimension go over to over here to label and then do add parameter then you can just call this the uh, circle diameter and you want to just give it a type parameter it's most likely you're always going to have this circle being the same size on every sheet uh, so I don't want to have this an instance parameter where anyone can just change it. You want to lock it into the type. Then um, go down here to group parameter under and you can actually just leave it on dimensions because that's what it is. So hit OK. Then I also want to create another dimension for the radius. So click on radial dimension and select this circle and just click anywhere in blank space. And first I want to just remove these zeros because they drive me nuts. So go to manage and then project units for length, click that, and then suppress zero feet. That way it'll just be a lot less text. So then I want to select this dimension here and again I want to give it the same label as the circle diameter. And just move this out of the way because it's annoying. So the reason why we did this is if we change the diameter, let's just make this a half inch, what it's doing, it's moving the circle out, the circle center point out, and the diameter, so that this point will always be on the center line, or the uh, origin point of the family. So I'm just going to undo that. Next what we want to do is create a line for our drawing title. So um, start with a reference line. And you'll notice you can't actually create reference planes other than the two that are already here. So we'll have to use a reference line and just put it anywhere, but make sure you hold shift and that it's vertical. Then 
go up to your dimension, align dimension, and click the center reference plane and then the new reference line that you just created and click. Press escape and then select the dimension again. Go up here to label and give it another parameter and you can just call this uh, length or line length, whatever you want. And we're going to make this an instance parameter because we want the line length here to be able to adjust depending on how much text we have in our title. And just so everything is grouped under the same area to make it easy to find, I'm just going to put it under text and hit OK. So now if I select the dimension, I can just change this to whatever I want. Three inches and you see this line adjusts. Then go over to create and make a line and then use the pick lines and click on lock and then click on the horizontal line so that way we know this line will always be there then zoom out a little bit just drag the right side of this line into place or close enough then use your align tool click on the reference line and then hover over the edge of the detail line so that you see a little blue dot and click and click the lock so that this line will always adjust or it'll stay with this reference line then do the same thing for the other side zoom out just drag it over a little bit then go up to a line click the vertical reference plane and then the edge of this detail line and click and lock okay so here it's telling me that dimension would over constrain the sketch and that's fine just hit cancel for whatever reason when we aligned it, even without clicking lock, Revit went ahead and locked it for us. How nice. So now we need some text. So we can't just place text in here because when we bring it into our project, uh, we won't be able to edit it. It'll just be static text. So what you need to do is create a label. And if you go to create and right next to text, you'll see label and just click label and really just click anywhere. So the first thing we're going to do here is the drawing number. So just click in the circle. Then you'll see a list of parameters. So we actually, what we're going to do here is create a parameter first. So if you hover over here, you'll see this says add parameter. Click that. And now we want to call this drawing number. And we want this to be an instance parameter because this is going to change for every time we have this um, drawing number here. And type of parameter, it's not a dimension, so we just want it to be plain old text. And we want it to group under text, which it already is. So hit OK. Then take the drawing number and click on Add Parameters to Label. And for the sample value, I just put in whatever. 22 sounds nice. And hit OK. So you can see it put a 22 here, which is fine but uh, this looks terrible so you want to just make a new or you want to change this text to something larger so let's rename this to um, a quarter inch because this is what we like to use in our office so um, change the text size to a quarter inch oops um, and then change the background to transparent Sometimes if the text is a little too close to the circle here, it will hide a little bit of the circle. So hit OK. You'll see this got a lot larger. And then you can just shrink this in a little bit. And just make sure it's in the center. Okay. And if this text looks a little too, too wide or too high, you can always go back to edit type and change the width factor to something smaller. Maybe 0.9 looks better. Great. Then what you can do is just copy this over. And then you want to make a smaller text for the actual title. So with the second label still selected, just click on Edit Type. Click on Duplicate. And just call this 1 8 or whatever text size you want. Change the text size to 1 8 And hit OK. Then you want to just make sure that this is horizontally aligned to the left and move it into place. 
I also what I like to do is this this extra border here kind of drives me nuts so I click on edit type and this leader border offset I just put it on the smallest value that I can which is 1 64th and what this is adjusting is how far away uh, a leader will start so it'll come out of this blue line if I make it larger then the leader will be a lot further out um, and then I'll just copy this again right down here and then just so it's all aligned I'll line it up the border offset with, with my uh, horizontal line here. So last thing we need to do is just create two more fields to type information in. So I'll select this label again, click on edit label, and what it's, it's still using the drawing number label here. So I'm going to click here and remove that and then add a new parameter, which we'll call that line or title top. And then also make this an instance, the type of parameter, make it text again, because that's all it is, and make sure it's grouped under text. Hit OK, add this over, and the sample value is fine. Just hit OK, and you can see that now changed. And you want to just stretch this out. So in case your title is too long, you don't want it, you don't want it bunching up like that. So make sure it's nice and long, and you should be OK. Select the bottom label, click on Edit Type and then you want to remove this again and then add a new parameter and call that title bottom and make it an instance a text parameter and group it under text hit OK add the title to the label parameters field and click OK again you want to just drag it out and that should do it so all you gotta do now is bring it in. So I'm going to load into my project here and you can see when I bring it in it looks exactly like the other one. So when I select it you, you get all these question marks and it's letting me know that there's a parameter here but there's no information. So I can start populating all this information top of my title and bottom. And there you go. Also if you look on the left side here the same information is here. And the reason why I worded it backwards is so that the, the two titles are on the top or they're together. And I have the drawing number here and the line length. So let's say this title is pretty short. I want to bring this line in a little bit. So maybe I'll try two inches. Eh. Okay, that looks good. So you should also note that when I measure this, from here to here it's telling me four inches and that is because of the scale that I have picked here so if I change the scale to let's say a quarter you see all my text is messed up but this family here if I measure it again and now it's two feet what's happening is that when I print this drawing this circle will always be a half inch no matter what the scale is this text will always be an eighth inch and this drawing number here will always be a quarter of an inch. So I hope this helped you guys. And if you like this video, please be sure to like it. And if you really like it, uh, please be sure to subscribe so you get all my future videos. Thanks.